Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Today, inshallah, we will take together and record the class of section 1.7. This section is about solving inequalities. We will learn how to solve linear inequalities and non-linear inequalities. Uh, I think, Ya Shabab, you know what we mean by inequalities. Look here, look at this part. We have equalities, but these are inequalities. Yes, they are not equal, not necessarily equal. They must be less than or greater than. So uh, what the inequality says, it says that one expression is greater than, we use this notation, or greater than or equals, less than, less than or equals another expression. For instance, for x plus seven is less than or equal 19. It is an inequality. How to solve, or what we mean, first of all, before how, what we mean by solving an equality. To solve an equality that contains a variable means to find all the values of this variable that make this inequality true. Find all the values that satisfies this inequality. Unlike equations, uh, you know, in the case of equations, we may have one solution, two solutions, three solutions. It depends on the degree of the polynomial that you are dealing with. But in the case of inequalities, in general, we have infinitely many solutions. Let me give you an example like this. This is equation, a linear equation. It has only one solution, x equals what? Three, just add uh, negative seven for both sides, divide by four we will get x equal to what? To three. Now, what about if it is an inequality? If you have here less than, not, not necessarily equals, not exactly equals, less than or equal. What you will do, by the way, how to solve, we will see that later. You will do the same, by the way. You will add negative seven, you will divide by four, but you will get what? X less than or equals what? Three. And in fact, this means all the real numbers less than, or equal to three, less than three and three. Here they are, like if you look at the numbers line, these are all the real numbers uh, satisfying this inequality. And these are, of course, th this will give us the solution set of this inequality, which is from negative infinity up to where? Up to three closed. This is how to write it as an interval. So in general, when we have an equality, the solution might be interval or union of intervals. But of course, sometimes we may have no solution. In some cases, we, we may have only one point. But in general, it is interval or, or union of intervals. Now, uh, we need to know what are the tools that we will use when we solve uh, inequalities. We will use almost the same tools that we used with equations. If you remember in section P8, we gave you there the properties of equality. When you have two sides equal to each other, if you add, you can add the same quantity to both sides, subtract, multiply, divide, take the reciprocal square both sides, uh, um, take the square root of both sides and so on. Here, almost the same, but not all the properties still valid. You have to be careful when you apply them for inequalities. Let's go over these uh, rules or these properties one by one. If you have A less than B, this will be equivalent to A plus C less than B plus C. What we did here, we add the same quantity for both sides. So adding the same quantity to each side of inequality gives an equivalent inequality. This means that they are equivalent. So this is equivalent to this, and this is equivalent to this. Similarly, when you subtract from both sides, also when you multiply both sides. But here, you, when you multiply an inequality by, by a number, you have to be careful. Is this number positive or this number negative? Now, if the case, in if the, if the number that you are multiplying by is positive, greater than zero, no problem. A less than B will be also less than, uh, C A will be also less than or equals to C B. 
Okay, I'm talking about the same if, if it is greater than. What you need to be careful about is this. When this number that you are multiplying by is negative, what will happen? This, the, 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 the sign of the equality will be reversed. The direction will be reversed. If it is less than, it will be greater than. If it is greater than, it will be less than. This is also the same when you multiply or divide. So when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to reverse the inequality. And this must be clear, Shabab, for you. Look at this. Let me give you here an example. You have two less than three. Clear. If you multiply by a positive number, let's say two. If you multiply by two, what you will get? Four and here what? Six. Still the same. It is still valid. It's still equivalent. But if you multiply by negative, so what you will have if you multiply by negative two? It will be negative four and this is negative if you multiply both sides by negative two. Is it still true? No, no. no negative four is greater than. So this is why you should reverse the inequality when you multiply by a negative number. Great. Now, the fourth rule says what? If you have A less than B, this is equivalent to one over A greater than one over B, which means that when you take the reciprocal, the reciprocal of each side of inequality, this will reverse the direction of the inequality. But here we have a small condition here, two conditions indeed. Both A and B are what? Positive. So this is when we say positive quantities. By the way, the, uh, rule number five, this is rule number five, it is still valid also when, when, when A and B both are negative. It is still valid also. But in fact, you don't need it. You can just multiply. Let me, let me show you this. Uh, two is less than three, right? Now take the reciprocal of both sides. Half is greater than third, not less than. Okay? Now, if in case of negative, negative two, negative three, how to compare between them? Negative two is what? Greater than. When you take the reciprocal, what will happen? It will be less than, right? We are dealing with a negative number. But if in this, in such case, in fact, you don't need to, why we didn't put it as another rule? Because it is implied here, by the way. You can solve this by using this rule. Let me show you how. Just here, when you have negative number, you can multiply both sides by what? Negative. By negative, so it will be two less than what? And in the case, both of them are positive. You can now work on it. One over two, it will be greater than one over three. Now, what about if one of them is negative, one of them is positive? Do we need to uh, write it as a rule or, or a property? In fact, no. Look, um, like what? Negative two, it is less than three, right? Take the reciprocal. Still, uh, clearly, every positive, every negative number is less than any positive number. So no, no need to put a rule in this case. Excellent. Uh, property or rule number six says what? This this rule. It says that uh, says that inequalities can be added. So if you have a less than b and c less than d, then a plus c less than b plus d. And also property number seven says that inequalities are transitive. This is clear. If A less than B and at the same time B is less than C, then what? Then A is less than C, say less than C, of course. Um, let's now start with solving linear inequalities. Let's start with solving easier inequalities. Uh, what we mean by linear inequality in one variable, it is an equality that has this shape. So when less, greater than, less than, any, any, any one of these symbols may be used. A is not zero, otherwise we will lost our variable. Uh, to solve, uh, how to solve such inequalities, Ishabar? So easy. You will do what? You will isolate the variable on one side. So you will add negative B for both sides, then you will divide by what? By A. Let's see this. How to solve this? Inequality. Linear. We will add negative 9x for both sides. Then you will have here what? In the left-hand side, we will have negative 6x, and here we will have 4. Then we will divide by what? 
by negative six, or we we will we will multiply by negative one over six. It is equivalent. So here we need to be careful. We will reverse. It is less than. It will becomes what? Greater than. So you need to reverse the inequalities. Now simplify. Here you will have what? Here you will have x, and here you will have negative two over three. So x greater than or uh, greater than strictly greater than negative two thirds. This means that the solution set is this interval. All the real numbers greater than negative two over three. Any number less than or equals to negative two over three is not a solution. It will not satisfy the uh, inequality. How to solve this? Um, in fact, here in this inequality, it is called, you can call it two-sided. It is two sides inequality. In fact, it is a pair of uh, inequalities. Not It is not only one. You can call it double-sided or two-sided, whatever. Let me let me write it. The, how to read it, by the way? Help me to read this. How to read it? You can read it from the left to the right and from the right to the left or from the middle, which is the best. 3x minus 2 is less than and emphasize on and. So 3x minus 2 is less than 13 and greater than or equals what? Four. So in fact, this is why they call it pair of two linear inequalities, two-sided. Uh, in fact, you can solve now each one of them easily. So here you will do what? 3x less than what? 15. Then x less than what? 5. Similarly, here. You will do what? Greater than or equal what? 6. X greater than or what? What we did here, we add negative 2 for both. We did the same here. We divide here both sides by 3. We did the same here. So now, how to find the solution set? If you look at the numbers line, this is from negative infinity to infinity. X less than 5. This is 5, and it is open at 5. This is X less than 5. X greater than or equals two. This is two, or closed at two because we have or equal. And here we are. This is all the real number is greater than two. So the solution set will be what? The intersection. When they are overlapping, when these two lines are over each other. So from where to where? Closed to and open. This is the solution set of this inequality. Do we need to do this? Or there is a, a, an easier way? Yes. Why, why should I separate it when I am able to uh, do it at the same time? In fact, what I did here is the same as what, what I did here. So we can do it simultaneously at the same time. Look what we will do. Oh, I wish it is in the previous slide. Here it is. And now what we will do? Keep in, I will keep our final result there just to show you that we can do the same. What we will do, ya shabab? My target is to isolate x here at the middle. So we will add to what? Again? To all sides. When you say both sides, you mean you have two sides only. We have three sides. So we will add three, uh, two to all sides. OK, all right. Now we will divide all sides by what? By three. That's it. So easy. No need to work with two separated inequalities and to, no need to work with that. But of course, in some cases, yes, you may need to go to the original idea. Maybe we have a recitation question that cannot be solved like this when it is not linear. Um, I think you can solve this recitation exercise. Please. And um, you need one minute. You can solve it in one minute. I will give you two. I will give you two minutes and I will take the attendance during that. I think no absences today. But let's make sure about that. Check your answer. This is the solution set. The closed interval 11 over 12 and 13 over 6. Should be easy, uh, Shabab. Let's solve it quickly. What, what is the best start to solve this inequality? We are LCD. Multiply both sides by what? Is the LCD 5 here? 
20. 20. 20. It is better to be multiply. You can multiply by five. It's okay. But it is better to multiply both sides by 20. So what you will get if you multiply both sides by 20? So multiply now. Multiply both sides by 20. What you will get? Negative 10 less than or equals uh, 4 multiplied by 4 minus 3x. You can do it in two steps. And this will be 20 over 4. It is what? 5. This will be 16 minus 12x less than or equals 5 greater than or equals negative 10. Right? Now we need to isolate. We will do that now the same. We are solving a two sided inequality. So we will subtract 16 from both sides. From all sides, you are right. And this, of course, will be simplified to what? 11 here or negative 11? Negative 11 greater than or equals negative 26. Now we will divide by what? By negative 12. But when we divide or multiply by a negative number, we should what? We should reverse. So this will be negative 11 over negative 12. And this will be instead of greater than, it will be less than negative 26 over negative 12. Simplify, x will be greater than or equals what? 11 over 12, negative over negative is positive. Greater than or equals what? 13 over six. Here we are. Now, one of the mistakes that some students do, they say the solution set equals to 13 over six and 11 over 12. Did you do this, do this mistake? This is a mistake, this is wrong. Always, in the in the interval notation, when you have A and B, you write the interval as A and B. What is in the first here is always the smaller. So this is not right. Which one is smaller here? So this is why I prefer to write it this way. X greater than or equals 11 over 12, less than or equals 13 over 6. By the way, it is the same. But this is written in an ordered way, from the left to the right. You can read it from the left or to the right or from the right to the left. So usually, usually in my case, I usually go from this step to this step directly. How? I just, when I divide by negative 12, I write it here, but I write it here in this direction. And I, I divide by this, by this, and I write it here. Okay, now the X is in this closed interval. Clear? Yes. Always, Shabab, in the case of uh, inequalities, we will write the answer in interval notations. We have studied this uh, in B2. We learned there how to do that in interval notations. Solving nonlinear inequalities. Now let's go to nonlinear. Don't worry, uh, I said that linear is easier, but it doesn't mean that nonlinear is not easy, easier. It is easy, just you need to follow these guidelines. We have here the, the catalog. If you have the catalog, you can you can uh, work, uh, learn, see how to work with the, this device. Any device with the catalog, it will be easy to deal with. So uh, what the guideline says for solving nonlinear inequality. Step number one, move all the terms to one side. Easy. I'd like to mention here that uh, if you have if you have quotients, if you have fractions, you need to bring them to a common denominator, which means write them as a single fraction. Step number two, factor. You know how to factor. Find the intervals. How to find the intervals? I will go back to this and explain it for you. You need to determine the values at which the, each factor is zero. You need to find the zeros. Then you need to find the intervals. Then you need to make a diagram or a table of signs. And to do that, you can use test values. And of course, you need to solve and don't check, don't forget to check the endpoints. Let's take an example. Linear or not? It is not linear. It is of degree two. In fact, it is quadratic inequality. How to solve it? Let's follow the guidelines. So step number one, move all, all terms to one side. So what we will do, we will move these terms, two terms here to the left hand side. Here we are. Why, why this step is important? Because I need to know when this is what? Negative or positive? Here it is negative. I want to know when this is negative. Step number two, factor. So we will factor the non-zero side. How to factor? X minus two times X minus three. Now, if it is equation, it is easy. 
If it is equation, what you will say? X will be equal to two or X equals to what? So it is the product of two numbers is zero. Then one, one of them must be zero when you have two factors. Now we have here a product of two factors is what? Zero or what? Or less than zero? Zero or less than zero. So this means what? That forget about equal zero. When you have two factors, are the product of them is negative. So what? One of them must be negative. So it means that this is negative and this is positive, or this is negative and this is what? Positive. This is the only case. So how to discuss that? How to deal with that? The best way is to use what is called find the intervals. How to find the intervals? You need to find the zeros of each factor. What is the zero of the first factor? Two. What is the zero of the second factor? Three. Now you will find after that the intervals. Then these numbers will divide the real line into intervals. If you have two zeros, you will have three intervals. If you have three zeros, you will have four intervals and so, and so on. Let's see the intervals that we will have from these two zeros. Now, on the numbers line, on the real numbers line, we will draw two and what? Three. Both of them are, are what? Closed because he said or equal. Now we have here three intervals. We may have numbers greater than three or between two and three or less than two. There is no other cases, of course, when you have two zeros like this. Now, how to know uh, what you need to know? You need now to go to step number four, make a table or a diagram. You need to use test value to make a table or diagram of the signs of each factor on this interval. In the last row of the table, determine the sign of the product or the quotient of these factors. Let's see. One way I don't, uh, you can use it, but I, I'll, I'll give you a, a shorter and easier way to do that. The classical way is to do what? Think about a test value here. Think about, for example, what? Four. Think about four and think about it here. When, when X is four, what you will have here? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. And here? Positive. So you will have what? Positive. Is it less than zero? No, no. So th this is not a solution. It cannot be barred from the solution. Now take a number less than two, like what? One or zero, zero is easier. What you will get here? You will get negative, negative, right? So it will be positive. The product will be negative, so it is not. So it means that the solution is between two and three, but it might be, of course, not. So to think about, for example, five over two, it is between two. This will be what? Positive and this will be negative. So it is negative. So the solution set is this interval. What about the endpoints? Because here we have or equal, we will make them enclosed. So it will be the closed interval two and what? Two and three. But I will give you, as I show you, Shabab, I will give you a better way. And uh, I believe that it is very effective just if you are careful about it. This way, it says what? Let me draw it for you in this example. And later I will just, so what we have here, Shabab, um, let me do it here for you. I will do it here. What are the zeros that you have? Two and three. Two and three. Go to the numbers line. This is negative infinity. This is plus infinity. Write them in order now. This is two. This is what? Three. The smaller on the left, the bigger on the right. Now, because here I have or equal, I will make this what? Closed and this one? closed. Now what I will do, I will write the factors. What is the first factor? X minus. What is the second factor? X minus Let me write, write them here. It is better to make them here. And the second factor is X minus three. Here at the base, at the basement here, I will write X minus two multiplied by X minus three, the product of them. Now X minus two, where it is zero, it is zero over here, right? It is here zero. After that, it will be positive. Before that, it will be negative. X minus three, where it is zero, it is here. After that, it will be positive. Before that, it will be negative. I will explain this for you. Why it is easy to decide about that without taking any value, without using test values. Now, what do we have here? We have here the product. 
So we have x minus two multiplied by x minus three. So it means negative by negative, positive. Positive by negative, negative. Positive by positive, positive. Now what I want, what I want the product to be, Shabab. The product is what? Negative, less than zero or equal zero. So we want this to be negative. So we, which one I will take? This is the negative. So now closed to closed three. This is the solution set. Voila, asal. So easy. Let me explain for you why this method work with even even with our test values. Look, this is the numbers line, right? What is the middle at the middle here? We have zero. So this line, in fact, is for x. The x-axis. On the right of zero. We have positive numbers, and when x is less than zero, it is what? Negative number, right? So here, this is x minus two. It is zero at what? At two. So on the right of two, it will be positive. On the left of two, it will be negative. Be careful just when you have negative. Look at this. When you have, when you have, this is zero, this is infinity, this is negative infinity. What about negative x? Negative x will be positive where? On the right, on the right of zero, negative x will be what? Negative. And on the left? Positive. So just you need to look at the coefficient of x. If the coefficient of x is positive, so it will be the normal order. On the right is positive, on the left it is negative. If the coefficient of x is negative, reverse it. Okay? Let's go to another exercise. I bought this, by the way, or this method, I put it here for you. Yes. If I want to fix the value, if I choose zero, it should be uh, zero. Uh, no, in the other example, it will be negative two, less mm -hmm. than or equal to zero. So why is this one? I didn't get your point. X minus it will three. be zero at two and three. Uh, the expression, this, this will be zero at two and three. Yes. So two and three are included for sure. Now you said if you bought X equal to zero, what will happen? Uh, it will be a negative two. Multiply by negative three. And it will be positive. Got it? Yes. We want it to be less than zero, negative. So we have one of them positive, one of them negative. Otherwise, they are not, uh, it is not true. Let's take another example, guys. Two X squared minus X greater than one. According to the catalog, the guidelines, what you will do? Factor, seven number two. Factor, why I will divide by two? Two X plus one, X minus one. Try to do factoring. If you cannot factor what you can do, quadratic formula. And of course, if you, this is a good question. If you obtain the quadratic formula, what you should do? What will be the solution? If you have a x squared plus b x plus c equals to zero, and you solve it by the quadratic formula, you will get negative b plus or minus the square root of two a. Do you remember? This is the discriminant. Now it will be x minus the first solution. You will have here two solutions: one of one with positive, one with what? So it will be let's say x one and x minus x two. This is how it will be. Okay. Uh, anyway, equals to zero to one. But mostly it will be factored. Now, if it is not factored and it has real solution, this is what you can do. But if, if, if it has no real, I will discuss this with you later at the end of the class or um, in chapter three, if we don't have time for that. So now what we will do, Ashabab, we have two factors. Now we will go to step number three, find what? The interval. Now, how to find the interval? You need to find the zero. This will be zero where? Negative a half. This will be zero if what? So what I will do, I will go to the numbers line, draw the real numbers line, write these two zeros in order. Now, open or closed? Both are open. Here we are. Now what we will do? We will write the first factor here and the second factor and here the product of them. Now the first factor is zero here. After that, it will be positive. Before that, negative. X minus one, it is zero at what? After that, it will be positive. Before that, it will be negative. You can use test values if you are not sure. Here we will have what? 
positive, negative, positive. What we want? We want to be greater than, which means what? So we want this to be positive. Now look from negative, the solution set will be what? From negative infinity up to what? Negative half, open union, open from one to where? To infinity. This is the solution set. Which means that any number, any number less than negative half or greater than one will satisfy this inequality. But the numbers between negative half and one, they are not. Yes. Uh, how, how do we determine uh, that two x plus one is negative? When it's less than half, negative half. I mentioned this. I think Abdullah here, if you were with us, I mentioned here that if you have x equal to zero, look at this x it is zero at what at zero on the right will be positive on the left will be negative always any factor any linear factor will be positive on the left uh, positive on the right negative on the left of it's zero unless unless the coefficient of x is what if the coefficient of x is negative it will be the opposite and this is just about think about it like a line with negative slope and positive slope when it is increasing it will be in the same order from negative to positive. If it is decreasing, it will go from negative to positive. We will have a similar, uh, I think, factors with negative um, coefficient in the next example. How to solve this, Shabab? According to the catalog, move all terms to one side. Ready. Ready. Factor. Really? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work with you, Muhammad. Here, if it works, you. <laughs> it is, uh, three zero. Uh, the... Yeah, Shabab. Not only you, by the way. In the previous sections, they did the same mistake. They said expand. X minus one all squared. Expand it. It is already factored. Abdullah said that at the beginning. It is already factored. It is ready. You have to distinguish between factoring and expanding. It is already factored. You will you you will go in the opposite direction you know, if you did the, anything for this, and you will go back and say, "Oh, I wish it was at the beginning." So in fact, here it is already factored. Here, in fact, we have x minus one multiplied by x minus one multiplied by x minus three. What you can do, it is already uh, factored. So in fact, how many factors we have here? We have four, but we have only what three zeros. So what we can do, we will go to the numbers line. Let me make it a little bit a little bit longer because here we have uh, how many zeros we have? Write them in order zero, one, three. Write them in the same in the right order. If you miss the order, it will be wrong. Now open or closed, all of them? Open. All of them are open. Now what we will do, guys, we will write them here. What is the first factor? Then x minus. Should I will repeat it? What do you think? No need to repeat x minus one. Just I will write what? X minus one all squared. It is better. And then x minus three. For this one, x minus one, I, I, it will be always positive. Is that right? If, you have, if I have y, what will happen if I have y squared? For any y, for any, for any, y y squared is always greater than or equal zero if y is zero so always have anything squared any number squared is positive okay if you don't like to do that write it twice write it twice so you can write it as x minus one and it will be it will be zero here after that it will be positive after that negative then multiply it again if you did if you didn't try it this and you write it twice what you will get you will get this and if you combine them, multiply this by this, it will be what? Positive, 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 positive. So no need. It is just clear from the beginning. So when you have, what about if it is to the power three? To the power three, it will be the same sign of x minus one to the power one, if it is odd. Now for x, Shabab, where is x is zero? x is zero here. After that, it will be positive. Before that, it will be negative. Because here we have three zeros, we have four factor, uh, four intervals. Always the number of the intervals will be more than the zeros by one. Now for x minus three, where it is zero? Here, after that, 
now multiply here we have the product here we have the product of all of these three four factors maybe negative by positive by negative positive what we want we want it to be negative so here we are and this still now tell us that the solution set is open or closed zero open zero to one open union from one to where to three this is the solution set. of course you can check by the way by by selecting one value to check if you are not but it is not easy always to check because you have infinitely many numbers maybe the one that you choose it works but maybe other others not um let's take one more easy according to the catalog uh, or what we can do here in fact this is not like what we have done before what we can do here uh, move on to the left -hand side. or this is what i'm waiting for yes multiply both sides by the lcd okay let's let's do this let's do this let's try to solve by multiplying both sides by the lcd by the way this method works with us when we have uh, equations do you remember it works we multiply both sides by one minus x and we can we can solve it let's try this here if it works this will save our time now let's multiply both sides by what so it will be one minus x right now move x to here and one to there what you will have two x greater than or equal what zero x greater than or equal what zero so this means that the solution set is what from zero to where to infinity is that right no. aha uh -huh. thank you we should exclude what so now we should say that it is from zero to one union from one to infinity why we should exclude zero because here when we multiply x cannot be what cannot be one it is in the denominator so now is it now it wasn't this one is not the solution is this now the solution are you sure yes. try four both four here no, take for example four x to say four and work there it will be one plus four over one minus four what you will get negative. five over negative what three is it greater than one no. So this is not a solution. Why? What is wrong with this method? Yes. No, this is easy. We, you, should, you should say that it is not zero. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Did you got what he said? We multiplied by a quantity that we don't know if it is positive or what. What we did, we assumed that it is what? So this is, this is in fact the half of the solution. If you want to continue, you need to discuss the another case. If it is what? And then find the intersection. And this will be a long story. Don't do that. Don't do that, never ever. What you should do? You should follow the guidelines. What is the guideline says? Move one to the left-hand side. This is step number one. Then do you remember in the factoring, I told you when you have fractions, when you have quotient, factor, of course, but first of all, before factoring, of course, if you can factor factor, it will be easier to write them as a single fraction, bring them over a common denominator. So now you have two fractions. You will write them as a single fraction. How to do that? In fact, one, it is one minus X over one minus X. Now the LCD is one minus X. Now multiply, be careful, you have negative here. It will be uh, one minus one will be zero. X plus X will be two X over one minus X. Now it is not uh, difficult to multiply both sides by what? By half or divide by what? By two, what you will get? You will get X over one minus X. It is not necessary, but you can do it. Why not? Is that right? Now, how to continue? Multiply. Uh-huh. Multiply. You will do the same mistake. You will repeat the same mistake that we did at the beginning. You will multiply by a quantity that you don't know it is positive or negative. What is the lesson that we have learned from this example? Never, 
ever multiply both sides of an inequality by a variable that might be positive, might be negative. You have to distinguish between, between this case and the case of equations. In the equations, it's okay. Okay? If it is positive or negative, the equality will be the same. But in the case of inequalities, it is not. You said it is what? Zero. So if you multiply both sides by one minus x, well, you'll get x greater than or equal zero. And we have agreed that this is false. We have solved it there. It is the same that we obtained the same mistake that we did before. So what we should do here, yeah, Shabab? No, of course, one is rejected for sure. But here, what you should do, how to continue? If it is like that, can you solve it when it is like that? If it was like this, can you solve it? What you will do? You make a table of signs, a diagram. Really? Why? It will be, of course, easy. Now, when you have here, you want it to be greater than zero, which means what? Positive, positive, or negative? So you can do the same here, positive over positive, or negative over the same idea. What we will do here, what we did when we have a product, we will do it here when we have quotient. So what, what, we, what we will do, let me do it here for you. We have x over one minus x greater than or equals what? Zero. I will go to the numbers line. This is negative infinity. This is infinity. What are the zeros now? How many factors we have? Solve it like it is like this. It is the same as this. Now we have two factors. In the denominator, what is the factor? X, what is the zero of this? Zero. zero. Now in the denominator, what is the zero? One. one. Now one should be open, why? Because it is in the denominator. Now here we have or equal, it will be zero. In fact, both of them supposed to be closed, but since one is in the denominator, it will be open. Now what we will do, we will do the same as we did before. This is X. This is one minus x. Now let me uh, put this a little bit lar larger. Now x, where is x is zero? Here. After that, it will be what? Before that, before that negative. Now one minus x, it will be zero where? Here at one. After that, it will be negative before that positive. Why? The coefficient of x is negative because here it is about negative x. It is decreasing. Now the quotient is here. The quotient of them will be here. Negative over positive, negative. Positive over positive, positive. Positive over negative. What we want, we want it greater than, we want it to be positive. So this is positive. So we will take this positive. So what is the solution set? Closed zero, open one. This is the solution set. Not greater than one as we did before, okay? So what is the lesson that we learned from this exercise? When you have quotient, oh, this is the most important part. Multi, this caution, this caution, be careful about this warning. Multiplying both sides of the, the, the inequality by one minus X doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? Because we don't know whether it is positive or negative. negative. Can I multiply by X squared? Yes. Because it is positive. Just I should say that it is not zero because if you multiply both sides by zero, you will kill your inequality. Okay, so this is the detailed solution. Yes. Can I multiply by x square root of x? Square root of x if it is positive. Yes, it is positive. Square root of x is positive. Uh, also, uh, you have to be careful about the endpoints. Here, you may forget to to include or to exclude one. One here is excluded, not included. So if you forget, be careful about the end points. Here we are. This is the end of this section, 1.7. This is the summary. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there are here many uh, excellent students. So if you are interested in more uh, inequalities and solving inequalities, see section 3.7 in chapter three. There are many interesting exercises here, uh, there. And uh, the idea is almost the same. Just there are a few, examples there for um, factoring by using uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. We will study that later. But this section, we will not study it there because it is almost the same as this section, 1.7 and 3.7. Both are about inequalities. These are uh, solved exercises for you to practice.
Ah, oh, this is an interesting one. I, I shouldn't skip this. How to solve this? Factor, x is a common factor. Now we, we will try to factor this. If we can factor it, it's okay. If we cannot, we will use the quadratic. If we get real solutions, we can, we can uh, continue. So if we have, for example, uh, negative B plus square root of D over 2A, and the another solution will be negative B minus square root of D over what? Over 2A. I will write this as X minus this, and the another factor will be X minus this one, right? Then I will go to the numbers line. I will put this one here, this one here, I can work. This is if it is real. This is if D is greater than zero. Now, if it is if it is less than zero, the solutions will be what? The zeros will be what? Complex. We cannot draw them on the numbers line. What is the name of this line? The real numbers line. So what, what to do in such case? How to solve such inequality? To deal with such inequality, what you will do? First of all, you know, Shabab, we will see that together in chapter three. What we mean by uh, that, uh, the graph, this graph, x squared plus x plus one. What does it mean that it has a zero, a real zero? It means that it intersects what? The x-axis. This is the meaning that it has a real zero. Now, when it has no real zero, it means that what? It will never ever intersect the x-axis. So it will stay always above or always what? Below. So it is always above, which means that y is always greater than zero above the x-axis, or it is always negative, less than zero forever. So when we have such 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 quadratic expression like this, and it is it has complex solutions, no real solutions, no real zeros, it means that it is always positive or always it doesn't change its sign from negative to positive, from positive to negative. So what do you think about this quantity? Is it always positive or always negative? Let's let's see the the, 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 the discriminant. What is the discriminant of this? B squared minus four AC. What is B? One. B is one and uh, A is one and C is one. All of them are one. So uh, A is B, A equals B equals C equals to one. So it will be D will be what? One minus four. It will be negative three, negative. So it has complex. So what you need to do if you have a, a quadratic expression with the complex solutions, just take any X that comes to your mind and put it here. Zero, what you will get? Positive. positive, so it is always positive. Whatever X is, this expression will be always positive. Now, because this is always positive, this is always greater than zero. It depends now on this. So we will have just X greater than what? X greater than zero. And the solution set for this inequality will be X greater than zero, which means from zero to where? To infinity. So it will not affect this one. It will not affect the sign of inequality. By the way, I just bought this remark for you here. If the zeros of an algebraic expression are complex numbers, then it's, uh, this expression does not change signs. That is always positive or always negative. We will practice more, inshallah, uh, not next, next class, the class after. Next class, we will take 1.8. Then we will practice by solving uh, 1.7 and 1.8 together. 